What is up? I love basketball TV. It's Coach Ron Rizuki. Today we're going to help you to shoot the basketball with better accuracy. Let's get to it. All right, so today I'm going to have John helping out with me today. He's an incredible shooter, really good dude. And uh, we're going to shoot some shots incorrectly and we're going to shoot some correctly as well. Just kind of seeing what you do right and what people can learn from what you do right, but also kind of making you do things that other people do wrong and kind of feeling how weird and how bad that feels. So first things here, I want you to start right here. Just shoot one shot and then just hold your fall through, okay? Let's stick on him the whole time. Go ahead, shoot the, shoot the shot right there. Okay, freeze, don't move. Bucket, now, right now, let's focus on this. Your elbow is right in level with your eyebrow, which is flawless, okay? Your guide hand hasn't pushed the ball at all and you got a nice snap of the wrist here, okay? A couple of things you're doing right. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to shoot, but when you shoot, I want your elbow to actually end up by your chin. Okay, not because that's correct, but because a lot of people do that and that's what's hurting people's accuracy. So try to shoot one shot and just keep that, yep, keep it lower. It feels weird, I know. Okay, short, right? Now, go ahead, relax. What's funny is people shoot the ball like that. So, when you shoot, you did it right and you came up and as you released, you had a nice release, right? Elbow right above that eyebrow. So that's one thing we want to focus on. You, you heard, right, you heard the swish. You made the one where you're able to have good arc on it but you missed the other one. Now, we're gonna actually do one more thing, which is weird. Your elbow is gonna go by your ear. So you're gonna shoot and have your elbow come up by your ear, right above it. Also kind of weird, right? Okay, so too high. Now, what we wanna do is kind of focus on having a good balance. I was taking a look at some NBA guys' footage. I'm not gonna name names, but there was a guy who was shooting the ball just a few times playing for a team. He's a, a, a lottery pick, and I'm trying to help him out with his jump shot because is going way too high when he misses, but the ones he makes, he has perfect accuracy or perfect arc on it, okay? Now, next thing is gonna be weird here. Watch this, let's put our hands on the ball. He does a good job of releasing with these primary fingers here, the index in the middle, and even sometimes with that ring, which is not a problem. Once it comes off the pinky, it's a problem. I want you to right now try to release the ball with the pinky and the ring finger. Let's go ahead and follow the ball, see if he makes this one. It's not easy to do. Okay, not even close, right? And you can see the wrist turn like this almost, trying to get it to release off that. A lot of people do that. I'm gonna help you out with a way to fix it in case you do it, right? So let's go ahead, free throw here. If that's a problem that you have, okay, we're gonna focus on making sure that these fingers are in the middle, right? And what you're actually gonna do is just go ahead and try to like take this finger off the ball, that pinky completely, cool? There's a couple ways to do it, but for right now, let's just go ahead and keep your whole hand on it like you normally would. Just lift that pinky up just a little bit right there and shoot the ball the way you're supposed to. That's better though, but it's a good release. Now, you can go ahead and put the pinky back on because I know you don't shoot with the pinky, right. but for players that do have that issue, go ahead, shoot the ball. All right, you got nice control of it and you're not shooting with the pinky. You're, you got a good flick right here, but there are players who do have that. So a couple things that they can do is one, they could tuck those fingers in and try to work on the shot just like this, right? And I don't mind it off of these two fingers also. So if really they just need to tuck the pinky in, they can just tuck the pinky in, right? And shoot like that. Try one like that right here where you just tuck the pinky in underneath, yep. Good, but the release still feels fine, right? As it should. So, so there are players who do have that kind of off, off turn and it's messing with their shot. Now, you don't shoot with the thumb flick. I don't shoot with the thumb flick. I never suggest people to do it. I want you to try shooting one and creating some side spin with it. So let's back up right here. Do you know how to do it? Yeah. So you're coming here and you want to push that ball and try to get some side spin on the shot. Yeah, and that feels kind of awkward, right? It feels really weird. So yes, you were able to make that one, but side spin is going to cause a lot of issues in, in people's shot. And so the easiest way to kind of teach this is less movements leads to greater consistency. I've told you this before, your shot is 99% perfect. There's one thing that you do a little bit different in your shot and it's not something that you can control. I still haven't told you what it is yet, but I will mention it. All right. So things that are going to help you shoot better, shooting off the correct fingers, shooting with good arc, that's going to help you have better control, right? A nice good spread of the hand and good hand placement. So hold the ball like you would normally shoot it. His hand placement is good. Let's come here and check it out, All right? His wrist is already loaded, okay? His hand is in the middle of the basketball, which is what you want. And the guy hand is actually perfect as well. Do you see how much space there is between these thumbs right here? This is also what you want. This is very good. Some players mess up because they're gonna actually start like this and their hands are way too close together. So what happens is, is they go up to shoot, then their guy hand comes behind the ball. And you see how my wrist, so let's go ahead, bring the ball up to your set point, as you normally would. Okay, bring it up to your set point, freeze. Do you see how his wrist is facing down? This is perfect. Now watch this, a lot of players will do this. Bring this elbow out. No, nope, I know it's tough. Yep, bring this elbow out, yep, just like that. So do you see now how his wrist is facing the rim? This is incorrect. When you pull this elbow out and then you face his wrist to the rim. Now, let's get this relaxed. Yep, that's good. This is what you always want. You want wrist facing down, 
Okay, I'm gonna have you shoot one where you face this wrist to the rim. All right, so you can start from the bottom. Start from the bottom, go down low. You see how his hands are too close? This is already a problem. And then bring it up slowly to that set point so you can show it again. And now you see how your wrist is facing the rim with the left hand? All right, go ahead and try to shoot one of those. How weird is that? <laughs> okay, now go slow. Bring it up the way you're supposed to. Okay. Yep, bring it up. Good, freeze. You see our wrist is relaxed down. Go ahead, go back down, and then bring it up and shoot it. Perfect. That's okay, but much cleaner on the release right there, right? You have better control of the ball. Here's the thing, too. When your hands are too close together and you're playing off the bounce, it's difficult to play off the bounce and shoot off the bounce because now you're coming like this, and you're trying to secure the ball with your hands really close, almost on top of each other. It's hard to get a good security of the ball, right? Especially for players with small hands. But the way you gather it, and the way I gather it, like this, we have good security because I could squeeze it, I could hold it, no one's touching it, no one's taking that from me, right? Even if someone touches it, you can still get up in your shot. Hands too close together, that thing's gone. You don't have any security on the basketball. So, some things he's doing right. Now let's check out the feet, okay? Hold it, just go like you would normally shoot it, freeze. He has feet at 12 o'clock, which I always suggest, and I'm gonna explain why. But it's also okay to turn just a little bit that way to 11 o'clock, which is totally fine as well. Now, here's why, okay? I have people every single day, look at me, I have people every day that teach, oh, you have to turn because it brings the shoulder in line. Every day I have people in my comments, in my sections, whatever, telling me, listen, you have to turn. It's the right way to shoot, right? Oh, KD turns, Kobe turns, Trey turns, Steph turns, everybody turns, which is true. However, check this out. I always am okay with this 11 o'clock turn and the way you and I shoot about 12 o'clock. Now, when you get to a player like Cameron Payne, right, and no offense to Cameron, he's a good shooter. Okay, his shot's a little funky, but he's a good shooter. He's at about, right, maybe three o'clock or so, or two, two o'clock, three o'clock. It's pushing a, a few steps over to this left side. The problem with this huge turn and the ball comes up the right side, which is already a problem as well, is if you're playing defense, okay, I want to have access to every single shot. So if I'm shooting at 12 or 11 o'clock, I can come here, boom, gather the ball and bring it up, and I can still get the shot off going to the left. I can do the same thing going to the right. Boom, gather, get into my shot. I can do hesitation pull-ups, I can do turn fades, I have all these options because I have a good foundation on my shot, and no matter what, my shot is always getting here right above that right eye, okay, and then we can go ahead and release, and you have the same thing, can you shoot fades, can you shoot step backs, can you shoot hesitations, can you shoot pull-ups, you can do it all, right, you're not limited to anything, now, when my turn is too big, and I'm shooting like this, right, let me know how I'm going to get into a one dribble pull-up, that's not happening when the defense is on this side, right? Even if I'm, if I did it normally, play up. If I did it normally, I'm coming here, boom, I can get that off. But if I'm doing it where I'm like this, you're limited to a lot of the shots that you can shoot. I can't shoot turnaround fades going over either shoulder. You see LeBron's shot, he would, if he's in a post, LeBron would rather turn over this right shoulder all day than he would go that way. And so the thing with shooting is you never want to limit yourself. Now, we're talking about accuracy, and so there's two reasons why this is important. So, the feet are good. Let's go ahead and shoot the ball with just that no turn that you have, that 12 o'clock. Good. Now, go ahead and turn just a little bit to 11. Yep. And that's also fine, right? Now, go ahead and turn like all the way to like 9 o'clock. Yeah, too much, right? And you can feel how that's kind of limiting you. And yes, you can still make shots that way because your shoulders align, but getting into different types of shots, you're gonna lose some of that accuracy. So we always wanna to try to, let's elevate on this one. You always wanna to try to jump and land around the same spot. Go ahead, get up. And land around the same spot. A problem that some players have, and, mess, and I'm gonna have you mess this one up. Come here. You're gonna shoot from here, but I want you to land over here. Okay? Good. And that feels really weird and really wrong, right? Now, and this is a common problem that a lot of players have. So what is the case is watch this, it, uh, typically is the knees caving forward. So come here. What you're gonna see is some players will shoot the ball and instead of dropping their hips, cause you can sit in a squat too, right? Go ahead, sit in a squat, all right? This is what you should be able to do. Some players, instead of dropping their hips, will push their knees forward. So I'm gonna have you try that one as well. Okay, so start here. Instead of dropping the hips, push the knees forward. And that's kind of forcing you to jump forward and be a little bit off balance, right? Now, what we want to make sure is we transfer energy by dropping hips and lifting up, land relatively in the same spot, maybe a little bit forward. But for those players who are leaning too far forward here or here and jumping way too far forward, that's going to be really difficult to be on balance and make shots consistently. So try to aim to drop butt, lift up, and land around the same spot, which is going to help your accuracy. All right. Last thing, let's focus on here. Come here. 
is just the placement and the shot path of the ball. So let's go look from right in front. So right here in front, I want you to just bring the ball up real slowly like you would into your shot. So start low, drop the hips. Yep, and bring it up real slowly. Okay, good. Now go back down and freeze. Okay, so he starts with the ball right here about at his belly button. Now bring it up real slow and freeze. And once he gets it up, his ball is aligned with his nose, which I always say is not a bad thing at all. Let me see it. Now, for me, I start with ball right here on the inner side of my thigh. So not here by the middle, but a little bit more to the right. Because when I bring it up, it goes through my right chest and my right eye. So my elbow is a little bit more under than yours, right? But both, I would say, are 100% fine. Where the problem is starts is when players start on this side. Because you can already see how my elbow is out of alignment from the beginning. So now as it comes up, now the elbow is definitely out of alignment, right? And so, yes, Kevin Durant does this. But Kevin Durant is also super tall, super strong. So when he does bring it up, he actually ends up getting it kind of more to here to the point where his elbow gets a little bit more underneath. It's a little bit funky of a shot, but he's able to make it. I would never teach it, right? If we want to make sure we shoot with good, good, good accuracy, we want to make sure that we have good and efficient foundation, right? So I'm here, inner, inner thigh. You're here, belly button. You go through the nose. I go through the eye. Both are good. Once you start coming through the ears or the opposite eye is when you, have, when you start having problems with your shot. Okay, last thing we'll finish up here. Let's shoot that same form. I'm going to have you shoot one shot, or let's go ahead and shoot two shots. Okay, and I want you to see how the form looks the same every time because some players struggle with this. Go ahead, shoot two shots. Good release. Bucket. Guide hand looks good. Shooting hand looks good. Let's shoot another one just like that. Good. Now, what you're noticing with the shot is it's the same every time, right? Or it feels pretty much the same every time. Okay, when he's shooting, some of the things that I know I focus on is always trying to put my hand in the rim, right? If I can always put my hand in the rim, I'm going to have a pretty simple shot. It's going to make it a lot easier for me to shoot with good accuracy. If you notice that your shooting hand is coming here, coming here, coming here, coming here, coming here, stay close and try to focus on just getting the shooting hand in the rim. What else are you focusing on when you're shooting? Uh, finish, make sure you finish the shot with a follow through. Just follow through, right? Put your hand in the rim, okay? For me, that's the easiest thing to try to have the same shot. Now, if I can keep my hand placement good, bring it up to the same path, that's gonna help me too, right? Some players have funky paths or their hands are moving in different directions. Always try to make sure you're putting your shooting hand in the rim. And I always advise good hand placement and releasing that ball with one hand the same way that we both do and that most players should do. Although there are a few exceptions to the rule, we always wanna have a good foundation. But those are some things that are gonna help you to shoot the basketball with better accuracy.